Good evening. This meeting of the Everett School Committee will come to order, and I would ask the clerk to call the roll. Student Rep. Riley Avalar. Present. Mr. Barrows. Present. Ms. Cardello. Mayor Di Maria. Here. Ms. Lambert. Present. Mr. LaMonica. Present. Mr. Mangan. Present. Mr. Marcus. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Present. Ms. Sarney. Here. Chairwoman Cristiano. Present. We have uh, nine members present. If I could, uh, we have a quorum. I could ask everybody to please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. Um, just some housekeeping rules. I see uh, some folks in the audience. Just please, I'll, I'll recognize you in a minute. Um, if you haven't already, if you could uh, sign in to the, uh, we've got a sign in sheet there. And I'd also like to make a really happy announcement. Uh, Joshua Del Gazo and his wife, Andrea, are expecting their first baby. And the baby's coming February. in February. So please, and, and if anybody wants to know who Jonathan is, he works, he's the one that puts this, helps and kind of like meshes it all together for us. He puts this fabulous ECDV production on along with his team. So, uh, and Andrea is down at the, the uh, Whittier School, a uh, uh, math teacher. So, you know, it's kind of a family and it's our family. And uh, so that's why I'm so excited to announce they're, uh, they're having a baby. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Marcus. I wanted to uh, mention Linda, I uh, was going to say Ricucci retired, Maloney, I'm saying her maiden name. And she has been around, I mean, most of her for years and years. And kid played sports and wonderful family. And she really loves this community. And she's, you know, sorry to see her go, but I guess after 32 years, you know, time's up. So I just wanted to mention her. You know, I'm, I'm sure everybody in this room knows her. Everybody likes her. So we'll wish her well, and maybe we can have her up one night or something, you know, to honor her. Thank you. That's a great idea, uh, Mr. Marcus. Uh, seeing no other housekeeping matters before us, I would ask the... Uh, Make a motion open up to public participants. Public no, oh, I'm reading sorry, meeting the records. Meeting the records. Yeah. I'll second it. Motion is made and seconded to accept the, uh, the minutes as presented. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have up next public comment. Make a motion to open public comment. Second, second. the motion. Motion is made and seconded to uh, open it up to public comment. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, I, would, I have a sign-in sheet here. And so uh, we'll go in that order. Uh, and I would ask everybody uh, to, you know, I have four folks that are already listed here. Um, just, you know, try to keep it to two, three minutes. And uh, I have uh, first up Nancy Cianchetta. Hi, I'm Nancy Sanchetta. I'm an Everett Public School employee and a, I'm an Everett Public School employee and an employee of the Witten Hospital. I live on Lynn Street in Everett. Um, there are a lot of uh, opportunities for STEM students over the summer. And this summer, a lot of our students have participated in several of those opportunities. Some of these opportunities are funded by grants. Some of those grants you re are recognizing this evening. Unfortunately, we did miss one of the grants this year from the Mass Life Science Center, but our students made a great show anyway. Our summer kicked off with a field trip uh, for a group of students, supported by Superintendent Taliani, to MIT. It was supported by our friends, our long-term friends at MIT, Mandana Sansafar, 
and our students enjoyed a full day of tours of labs and interaction with scientists. Other students have participated in internships over the summer and over the course of several years. The students participated in the Leah Knox Scholars uh, internship and that one was also funded by one of our grant sponsors. Students who participated were Nicole Mumbai, Lakeisha Kiernan, Dinah Lewis, Pratika Maharajan, Chris Mumbai, Kirsty Hall, and Darian Ventura. They all participated and did presentations on topics as broad as cell structure to um, cell uh, photometry. Other students, Ken Lau, for example, participated in the Broad Summer Scholars. The Broad Institute is one of the premier institutes for research in this area. These are great honors for our students. They did a fantastic job. Last student who participated was from the Allied Health Academy, and that was Isabella Souza, and she participated in the Forsyth Summer Scholars Project, and she did research on diabetic bone disease. So our students are doing a fantastic job. They, we are very, very proud of them in the STEM and the Allied Health Academy. Thank you very much for your time. I have uh, Mary Horton. Hi, Mary. Hello. Good evening. State your name for the record. My name is Mary. My father was a teacher in the public school system for 30 years. He'd be appalled to see kids taking classes in areas that are not big enough. We have amazing teachers go out of their way, do the best job they can, led by an outstanding superintendent. We believe in her. We believe in our students. Students come from other places, you may not realize it, and attend our school. And it increases our numbers, and they do so because it is such a great school. But we need more room for these children. If you cage them up like an animal in small spaces, you're going to have a problem. Now, I don't see what's wrong with Pope John. It's not a great place for apartments at all. It was a wonderful place for children to learn. I want to make my point. Kids come first. End of the question. We have a lot of apartments already. We don't need those apartments. Any questions? Thank you. Next up, I have uh, Paula Storiti. Paula, come forward. If you could state your name, Paula, for the record. Sure. Uh, Paula Sturiti, 100 Cleveland Ave. I have a couple of questions and a few comments. At the last community meeting at Pope John's, the chief of staff shared with residents that 30% of kids in Everett don't live in Everett. I'd like her to present the data to back this up, or is it just propaganda? And if it's untrue, to issue a public statement correcting this mis misinformation. Why would, the, why would the administration hire an architect to assess the costs of Pope John without consulting the, the school department on how they wanted to use, utilize the school? Next, I want to thank those who attended the community meetings at Pope John. As I emailed you all last week, two custodians were so concerned about the overcrowding that they came to say, keep Pope John as a school. We have a school that a capacity is 650 kids that currently is at 1,200 kids. We have the high school with the capacity of 1,750 that's probably close to 2,200 students today. How can you sit by and allow kids to sit on the floors or milk crates in the hallways as classrooms? 
Some of you have voiced concerns about kids misbehaving. I say stop treating them like animals. We treat our dogs better. This isn't a new issue. How can you remain silent? I'm an, I am assume, assuming you all ran because you cared about education. So I ask, where is your outrage? I have no kids, I, but I was brought up that it's our moral obligation to provide everyone, everyone with the opportunity for a good education. The only real path out of poverty and a better life is with a good education. I ask you all to come to the next community meeting this Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the Pope John to, to support the residents who are voicing their concern and support to keep Pope John as a school until the overcrowding can be addressed with a new high school and possibly another elementary school. The situation is only going to get worse. We have an additional uh, six to 7,000 new residential uh, housing uh, spaces coming soon. The current in the 2020 census, almost 30% of the population of 50,000 people had the, were under the age of 18. That means they're school-age kids. Where are they going? Thank you. Thank you, Paula. I have uh, next up Maria Bussell. Maria Bussell, 8 Freeman Ave. When I googled what are the responsibilities of a school committee member, the following definition came up. The primary function of a school committee is to contribute to the efficient operation of the organization. Now let us think about recent meetings. I have not seen that happen. How can this committee contribute to the efficient operation of the organization when they can't even efficiently run a meeting. Prime example, last meeting. Between no-shows, changing venues, and walking out of meetings, how can anything be accomplished? I think it's quite obvious there's certain members on this committee whose sole purpose is to cause chaos and to make sure there is no quorum. It has been their goal to focus only on the demise of the current superintendent by such means of not extending her contract, not allowing her to be the secretary for the committee, and to make it appear that she is not qualified. Mm -hmm. However, I have yet to hear any discussions on how you plan to alleviate the severe overcrowding issue. All I've seen are attempts to sabotage any decision making. I'm hoping that you all chose to run because you truly believed you could make a difference in bettering the children's educational experience. Please do right by the children of Everett and surprise us by doing what you were elected to do by the constituents that believed in you and vote your own conscience and really make Everett schools Everett proud. My granddaughter is counting on you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have anybody else in the audience that would like to say a few words? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Close pu public participation. Motion is made and seconded to close public participation. All those in favor? Aye. The ayes have it. Um, I would ask the uh, Superintendent to read the next order of business. Thank you and welcome everybody tonight uh, to our first school committee meeting of the school year 2022-2023. It's so great to be back. Um, so the item number six is the report of the superintendent. We're going to start with item number one, which is... Oh, report of what student is? representative. <gasps> Oh my goodness, I was wondering why it said six. Okay, five, sorry. <laughs> Roman numeral five is the report of the Not student. Not the personal, yes, Riley. My, my apologies. Report of the student representative, um, and so I'll pass it along to our student representative, Riley Avalar. Since school hasn't began, there's much, not much to report on going on within the school. However, regard, regard, regards to Everett High sports, volleyball tryouts have been 
um, from the 22nd and concluded the 24th, and practices have started. The varsity team j just had recently played at the Malden Jamboree this past Saturday and had a scrimmage earlier today. For cross country, they are in their preseason and have practices at River Green Park. Their season officially starts this Thursday and have their first meet the following week against Lynn, Lynn English. The football team just finished camp on Saturday. They are now preparing for their first game on September 9th against their rival Severian, along with two scrimmages coming up this week. Trials for cheerleading happened before the end of the school year and they've been practicing throughout August. Soccer trials happened last week and practices will be starting soon. They will be playing in a scrimmage on Tuesday. Field hockey trials were this past week, starting on August 22nd and ending the 26th, as well as captain's practices. The first team scrimmage is this Tuesday, August 30th, against Peabody at Peabody. At Peabody. People who wanted to join the golf team had emailed Turner by the end of this week, and practices will be starting next week. As of right now, they do not have a match scheduled yet, but our team will be preparing for the upcoming season. And for the first day of school, Everett High student ambassadors will be welcoming freshmen this Wednesday. There will be some in homerooms and some in the lobby um, in order to welcome freshmen and assist them on their first day of high school. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, by the way. I'd also like to uh, make an announcement that I uh, forgot to make earlier. Um, unfortunately, Ms. Cadillo was unable to attend the meeting today. Uh, she's uh, just to, you know, not to get into details, but she's uh, not feeling very well and uh, so won't be here. And we wish her the best and hope she's uh, for a speedy recovery. Okay, Madam Superintendent. Thank you so much. So now we'll move on to Roman numeral six, the superintendent's report. Uh, thank you so much to the student representative. I can already tell that my job this upcoming year is gonna get a lot easier uh, with all of her great reports. So thank you for that comprehensive update. Uh, so we are very excited to be coming back to school. Um, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what this week looks like, uh, today we hosted our district-wide PD day. Tomorrow teachers will be at their schools for their school-based professional development and for classroom setup. On Wednesday, we will have a half day of school for grades K through nine, um, and we will have our ninth grade orientation that day, and that's the day that our student ambassadors will be there in order to support our incoming students. On Thursday, we will hold a full day for K through 12th grade students. Um, and parents should take note that we will be off of school on Friday, September 2nd through Tuesday, September 6th because of the election. However, educators will be in another district-wide PD on that day. And then on Wednesday of next week, or September 7th, all of our students pre-K uh, to 12 will report back to school for a regular school day. So at that point, the school year will be in full swing. So as I like to do, I wanted to start tonight's update by spotlighting some of our students. We've had a lot of amazing accomplishments over this past summer. Um, I did, since we have a school committee meeting, I did split some of them up uh, in order to make for uh, a, a briefer meeting. And I do want to thank Ms. Sanchetta for coming up and, and um, highlighting the amazing accomplishments of our students. So another group of students that did amazing work this summer are our EHS, EHS students and rising juniors, Suzanne Maharjan, Luis, Luis Santana, Alyssa Parziali, Kesta Sandy, and Xiomara Perez Puerta for completing a robust summer internship with the Members Plus Credit Union. So these students worked with several members of the MPCU, including the Senior Vice President of Marketing, Janice Keynes, an Everett High alum. I thank you also to the marketing CTE instructor, Siobhan Sullivan, for helping to organize this opportunity for our students. Among their responsibilities over the summer was to help coordinate a community service project in which they collected 400 backpacks that were filled with school supplies and distributed uh, to many schools and youth programs, including those in Everett. The interns also helped create a marketing campaign for a checking account product for teenagers. And all around, this was just a wonderful opportunity for our students. 
On to one of our educators, I wanted to recognize EHS technology teacher Neil Plotnick, who was presented with an award by cyber.org during the Summer Cybersecurity Educators Discovery Forum in Alexandria, Virginia. Mr. Plotnick is an active member of cyber.org, which has incorporated some of the lessons he has created into its curriculum. Cyber.org is a national group that's dedicated to empowering educators to prepare the next generation to succeed in the cyber workforce. Mr. Plotnick's work directly benefits our students as cybersecurity is a very rapidly growing field with thousands of well paying jobs. So we applaud his enthusiasm and dedication. Thank you also to the Saugus Everett Elks for making a generous donation to the Everett Public Schools for our back to school efforts. The Elks provided 105 backpacks as well as fleece blankets and scarves for our kindergarten students. Uh, thanks to the Elks for this support and all of the support they've provided to our students over the years. So I know everyone is interested in COVID guidance um, for this upcoming year. The Department of Elementary and Secondary Education did release a joint memo um, with DPH on their COVID-19 information for this upcoming school year, and it is aligned to the CDC guidance. So the focus this year, in the words of DESE, is on making sure that our students are being provided with rich opportunities, uh, extracurricular activities, and an educational environment for positive social interactions among students and between students and staff. So basically getting back to where we were before the pandemic. Districts are being asked to focus their COVID mitigation strategies towards vulnerable and symptomatic individuals while minimizing the need for more restrictive and widespread policies like the ones that we did have to implement last year. The Commonwealth is not recommending universal mask requirements, surveillance testing of asymptomatic individuals, contact tracing, or test to stay testing in schools. There is no longer any statewide masking or testing mandates in schools other than in the school health offices. But as always, any students or individuals in our school buildings who wish to continue to wear a mask or who may be immunocompromised are certainly encouraged uh, to wear a mask. Asymptomatic individuals will also not be excluded from school as a result of exposure, regardless of their vaccination status or exposure setting. DESE will continue to support school districts via their rapid response call-in center, uh, but obviously, uh, you know, we had COVID-19 updates every, at every one of these meetings for the last two and a half years that I've been here, uh, so I am hoping that uh, these will sort of fade into the background over this coming year. Also, our updated COVID-19 guidance will be on the website tomorrow. So we've been doing a lot of learning uh, over the summer with our educators. Um, that's the time that our educators get their opportunity to kind of refresh and to learn. So we started this on October, or sorry, August 17th through 19th when we held a three-day leadership retreat for our central administration, directors, coordinators, principals, and assistant principals. So we divided the content into two large categories. First was operations, safety, and inclusion. That made up the first day, and then the second day was based on instruction, which was led by Dr. Jeff Zweers, who I'll talk a little bit more about in a moment. The first day included a presentation by Stephen Bernstein from our new employee assistance program, which is called All One Health. So we did make a change to our this new employee assistance program at the conclusion of last year, and I would encourage all of our staff to familiarize themselves with all of their huge suite of services, because they have quite a few services that they provide. Our HR director, Frances Canty, gave leaders some important updates, including new protocols uh, relating to personal days, leaves, the new contract negotiations, professional development. Our budget and grants director, Shirley Pang, provided us with information about the procurement process, field trips, teacher supplies, and budgeting tools for our schools. Our new director of security, Lauren O'Connor, gave a wide overview of safety practices and procedures. And it is great to have Lauren on board as she has a firm grasp of this work and how safety is intertwined with the workings of our school building. Also on the safety front, we did get to hear from Everett Fire Deputy Will Hurley about fire safety, and he reinforced 
reinforce several building fundamentals that we need to be making sure that we're doing. Uh, special thanks also to our EHS guidance counselor, Maureen Kavinsky, who gave a presentation on ALICE training. So Ms. Kavinsky, Ms. Kavinsky became a certified trainer last year during many of the trainings that we offered. Um, and so it was great to have her, as somebody who took the training and has now been trained to be a trainer, come and train all of our school leaders. The second half of the first day was focused on inclusion, and we were pleased to have Kay Mangan and Dom Washington from Ellie Sark, who gave a very thoughtful um, and honest presentation about how we can meaningfully and genuinely support our LGBTQ plus students. We also welcomed Victoria Privet from the Insight Education Group, who is going to be working with the district to build a strong racial equity framework. So I want to thank all of our presenters and all of our leadership team for engaging in this three-day retreat. So the second day of our leadership leadership retreat and today during our district-wide PD day we hosted renowned educator and researcher Dr. Jeff Zwiers who is working closely with not only our school leaders but also our teachers on the theme of academic discourse. He will be back with our teachers on September 6th for professional development and he will meet with principals and school leaders again on November 8th. He will also be leading a teacher professional learning community uh, which is featured in our PD catalog as well as having ongoing virtual meetings with our principals. So this is going to be an ongoing focus for us for this school year. He is helping us to focus on getting our students to engage in authentic conversations and idea building in the classroom, so being more active participants in their learning rather than passive recipients of their learning. So his work is centered around the belief that students do traditionally engage in very few productive back and forth conversations amongst themselves. So we're going to be focusing on authentic communication um, this upcoming year in all of our classes. We also uh, held our new teacher orientation last week. Um, we had a very comprehensive staff orientation uh, that was held from Monday to Thursday of last week, and it featured a mix of presentations here at Everett High. Um, thanks to K-8 ELA and math directors Genevieve McDonough and Rupi Kaur for taking the lead in organizing this event, which has become a, an important part of our late summer calendar. Ms. Canty, um, our HR director, data manager Curtis Tudin, community engagement manager Jeanette Velez, social and emotional learning director Dr. Brian Wallace all spoke during Monday's program. Tuesday was focused on the students of the EPS and a curriculum and evaluation overview. Wednesday featured a presentation by the Everett Teachers Association and a presentation on culturally and linguistically sustaining practices. Wednesday also gave the attendees the chance to have lunch with their mentors. And Thursday was highlighted by a presentation by the organization Reimagining Migration, which has worked with our educators several times in the past. And to talk a little bit about who our new staff members are, um, as of last week, we have 96 new educators who have joined our ranks, and we're very excited to have them. <laughs> So this slide shows a breakdown by position, um, highlighted by 65 teachers and substitute teachers. Our new teachers include a mix of first-year educators, along as veterans who are joining us from other districts. We also have 13 new paraprofessionals to support teachers and staff, as well as four new family liaisons who will work with Ms. Velez. This chart includes new EPS employees only. So for example, we have hired several new assistant principals this year, but only one who is actually new incoming to our district, so this would only um, depict that one incoming person. Much attention is being given right now, and rightfully so, to the difficulty that districts are having in filling open positions. And obviously, this is not a reality. This is a reality we have also had to face. Uh, but we have been proactive and diligent, and I do feel like we are in a good place to start um, the school year on Wednesday. So as I mentioned, we did have our EPS staff professional development today um, with all 800 of our educators, teachers, paraprofessionals, school leaders, um, in which we were able to have Dr. Jeff Zwiers, who led a the two-day professional learning for our school leaders, led the first day of that two-day professional learning today for our educators. I also want to thank the school committee members who were able to come out. It was a really wonderful day of learning. Um, 
in an environment that I think really honored our educators as the professionals that they are. Um, and we're very excited for next week as well. And it was really great. We've started to go through the feedback that um, we're receiving and it has been great, overwhelmingly positive, and one of the most interesting pieces of feedback that I hadn't even thought about, in addition to like a nice venue and good food and lots of parking and, and, and good instruction was the fact that um, a lot of our educators have worked in multiple school buildings around our district over the past many years of their career, and this was an opportunity for them to kind of come back together again to be able to collaborate in the same content area or grade band, but to almost be a reunion of sorts where our teachers get to sort of cross collaborate and get back together. So, you know, we are, one of the things I love about this community is how much of a community it is. And so it's great to be able to foster that environment where educators get to be together, learn together, um, and, and be able to get excited together about the upcoming school year. Um, so we do have an item on today's agenda too uh, regarding our grant funding for our math acceleration academies. Um, our ELA and Math Accelerations Academies. And so this slide highlights what we do with that grant funding. We did held our latest acceleration sessions from August 22nd through August 26th, so just last week. Um, and here are some of the highlights. At the Lafayette, 40 students worked with eight teachers on preparing for the upcoming school year. Um, they did fun and creative activities uh, where they were able to apply uh, their learning to real world situations. The Madeline English hosted 30 students um, for incoming first, second, third, and eighth graders. And they focused on many areas, uh, including data measurements using the metric system, fluency and comprehension, fictional text in ELA, equal shares, and whole numbers operations in math. At the Webster School, five teachers worked with 28 students on phonics, multiplying and dividing whole numbers, fraction equivalents, and operations with fractions. At the Kavarian, four teachers led a group of 32 students. Um, they read novels such as Tales of Fourth Grade Nothing by Judy Bloom, um, and they also got to take part in hands-on group activities to solve word plop problems and fact fluency with an emphasis on long division, fractions, and probability. And then last but not least, the Parlin Acceleration Academy featured 22 students, students in grades K to three centered on letter naming and sight words. And at the four through eighth grade level, the literacy instructional focus was reading comprehension. And in math, students were working on multiplication facts through different entry points, including but not limited to online games and flashcards. So I want to thank all of the educators that worked last week to support our students at the Acceleration Academy. Also, <laughs> just add one. sure. I think you so, turn on your mic. If everybody doesn't mind, so there's no fee attached to any of this. All the summer programming and that is correct. So we. Um, try our best and that's why on the on the agenda tonight we will have the Acceleration Academy grant. So we try our best to apply for grants through DESE or through the state in order to uh, supplement any of the costs for these programs. But yes, our programs that we provide over Fe February vacation, April vacation, through August Acceleration Academy, those are three Acceleration Academies that we have. Those are at no cost. And then our summer programming, which includes sports camp, enrichment camp, um, I'll actually be giving a full rundown of those at next week's meeting, um, those are all free to our families as well, with the exception of Alphabest that does, um, that's our after school program as well, that does have a cost attached to it. Thank you. I have no other questions. Um, and thank you to those of you who were able to join us at the Back to School Bash right before um, tonight's school committee meeting. This is our second annual Back to School Bash. It was such a success last year that we brought it back this year where we had video game trucks, food trucks, uh, games for our students. It's just a nice way to kind of kick off the upcoming school year. So thank you to those of you who were able to join us. Now, that brings me to the end of my presentation. I do have a lot more updates, but again, like I said, I tried to split them between this week and next week because um, we do have a lot to be excited about here in the Everett Public Schools, so I'll share more later. But I will take any questions at this time. Mr. Barrows. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the superintendent, uh, just want to uh, 
Actually, it's not a question, but it's a comment regarding today's uh, Professional Development Day. I was able to uh, stop by during lunchtime and while I was talking to the superintendent with some principals or uh, teachers who stopped by and comment how they you know, enjoy being together with everyone. There was a huge crowd. It's sometimes you know how many employees we have. Um, but when you see all of them in a ballroom, it's just like, wow, it's like huge. Um, but it was great to see all of them interacting with each other. Each table had marked the name of the school and uh, those interactive exercises that they were doing and the feedback that uh, I got uh, while I was talking to you, but also to a few principals, how uh, welcomed that that was. So it was great to see that we had that uh, uh, we were able to provide that professional development day, uh, and those and our educators were able to you know, be together and exchanging ideas. I think our students are the only ones who win uh, with all of this. So, just want to thank you uh, for for what I saw today. Thank you, Mr. Barrows, Mr. Mangan. Thank you, Madam Chair. I also was fortunate enough. I was up early in the morning, had breakfast, and then stayed for um, a little bit of the. Uh, Dr. Zwe's um, presentation, but I gotta say that, you know, it, it was pretty amazing, and there was this one section which I've talked to several, uh, several people about before um, the meeting, but at the beginning, he was showing this one video, I don't know where, where it was, but it was about instruction for the, um, the, the children, and, um, and, you know, getting the teachers to engage, but not only with the teacher, but the students themselves to really, and he was showing examples. And he, this school, I don't know where it was, but he had these two first graders, and the teacher brought up a, top, a uh, topic on the puffer fish. And then it was just two kids just going back and forth, and they didn't even know the camera was on them. And it was just the dialogue and how they, you know, and, and the Dr. Suez was trying to show them, you know, to get the, kid, the kids involved with each other. And it was just like a you know, 10 minute conversation going back and forth and how they were just collaborating on stuff and they were both listening to each other's ideas and it was pretty amazing. So I just, and that was, you know, I, I didn't get to stay the whole day, but just that one section, I found it um, pre pretty pretty amazing. Like I said, it was just it's just good that you don't realize all, all the stuff that's out there, but he, he I, I thought he did a great job today. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mangan. Okay. Um, Continue. Please. All right, thank you. So item number two is the Everett High School update. So I'm gonna be asking to invite up Everett High School Principal Dennis Lynch um, to speak with you about the 2022-2023 school year. Um, as many of you have maybe read in the papers or seen in our announcements, he began his tenure earlier this summer after spending two years as the principal of the Parlin School. And prior to that, Mr. Lynch spent several years at EHS where he served as a dean of students for both freshmen and senior your classes and as a social studies teacher. He holds a Bachelor of Arts um, from UMass Amherst and a Master's in Education from Fitchburg State University and I'm very excited uh, to have him in this role and to be able to work with him on a daily basis. Um, also with him are his two assistant principals, EP, also longtime EPS and EHS educator Stanley Chamberlain and James Murphy. Um, all three individuals have been previously at Everett High School. Um, Mr. Chamberlain was a former guidance counselor um, and is the current head of the Crimson Tides boys basketball team. And Mr. Murphy is a versatile and experienced educator who previously served as the EHS data director, overseeing the school's management system and scheduling system. So collectively, this trio um, has extensive experience across the Everett High School and all of the major departments. And we're very excited to have them in these roles and to welcome them, welcome them here today. Oh, and if I could please have a motion to bring up so Mr. Lynch. Motion is made and seconded to invite Mr. Lynch, Mr. Chamberlain, and Mr. Murphy up. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. That's all right, I get back. I'll represent them all, it's all right. They're a little bashful today. If you could just state your name, sir. Uh, my name is Dennis Lynch, I'm the principal of Everett High School. 
Um, so thank you very much, school committee, uh, Madam Superintendent, for allowing me to speak tonight. Um, a couple of people stole my thunder. Mr. Marcus, I was going to mention Linda Maloney, um, which is going to be a huge loss to our school. I think it was 36 years in the Everett Public Schools, which is amazing, um, particularly in 2022, where a lot of people struggled to stay a year, 36 years in the school system. and. If you came in a little earlier, she is still downstairs working to help us get ready for the start on Wednesday. So um, it's going to be a huge loss in the school. She has a granddaughter in the system who was at the Parkland last year where I was principal, so who's one of my favorite students. So I'm just going to, uh, we're really going to miss her here. So thank you, Mr. Marcus, for bringing that up because she is a, um, it's going to be a huge loss to re refill that place. Um, the other thing I was going to talk about, I was going to talk about myself a little bit because who doesn't want to hear that, and Mr. Chamberlain <laughs> and Mr. Murphy. So uh, for those that don't know me, I, um, I have somewhat of a unique background. I didn't stop my career in education. If you told me that I would be a teacher at this point in my life, I would have told you I was crazy when I was in high school. Um, my first start, I was actually a probation officer. I worked for the Department of Probation for seven years before deciding to change over, go back to school and get my master's in education. And Everett was my first teaching job. So I taught in this building. I taught ninth grade social studies, absolutely loved it. Um, from that position, I moved on. I became the dean of students. My first year, I dealt with actually 9 through 12 with a focus on dropout prevention and tardiness. I did that for a year. Then I moved on to back-to-back -back senior classes. Very proud to say that in those, we graduated 504 students, and then I believe the next year, 502, Mr. Chamberlain, uh, which was really, really impressive. Then I had the freshman. Um, the following year, became the assistant principal of the Parlin. The last two years, I've been the principal of the Parlin. Um, the Parlin, I am very much going to miss. Um, but, so it's a little bittersweet coming up here, but this is home to me. This is where I started. This is the age group that I really identify with. And so I'm very excited to be back, and I'm very thankful for the superintendent for this opportunity. Mr. Chamberlain, um, got to know him, working with him as a guidance counselor, uh, a true gentleman, one of the best people I've met. Uh, he was a teacher in Chelsea before becoming a guidance counselor for um, a number of years. He worked with at-risk youth in Chelsea, works um, as the current head basketball coach at Everett High. So Mr. Chamberlain has been my assistant at the Parlin for the last two years. Mr. Murphy is also a longtime uh, Everett educator, director of data, inclusion teacher, um, teacher. He's held a number of positions, um, K through 12. And he was my assistant also at the Parlin last year. They are both Everett High graduates, so they went through the system and continue to give back. So I'm um, very excited that they joined me in this venture. We do have our work cut out for us, but I think we're in a good place, so I'm going to give you some updates on. Please pardon, my PowerPoints are not as good looking as the superintendents. I just kind of give you the bullets. So I'm going to give you some broad strokes as we move forward. So our current enrollment, which has actually gone up since I made this slide this morning, is 2,198 students, our ninth grade, so our incoming freshmen, we have 583. We have 618 sophomores, 566 juniors, and our small grade, if you call it small, is our seniors at 431 students. I already introduced those guys. So my goals, as I set out for this year, were number one is safety. I don't think that's a, um, a shock to anyone, as over the last year, over the last couple of years, not just in Everett, but across the country, across the city, uh, across all our schools, safety is obviously at the forefront of all of our minds. So the safety of students and staff is my number one priority. If I do that, I'll feel very accomplished. And I'm going to talk in a minute about some of the things that we put in place, some of the things that were put in place last year that we're continuing, and some of the things that we're going to continue moving. So safety and students of the staff 
is number one. I do have a law enforcement background. Um, the kids all think that I'm a prison guard, which is a completely different thing, but that's okay if they think that. Um, but the safety of the students and the staff is obviously number one. Number two is accountability on teaching and learning. So what that means is an increase in rigor in what our students are studying. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the transcript audit that we've conducted since we've been in the building to make sure that students are on track. Um, with some added staff and with some changing of responsibilities, our department heads should be freed up more to be in the classrooms, to be working with teachers, particularly our new teachers. We have an exceptional staff here. Ms. Sanchetta, who is here, has been in the district for a long time. She's one of our excellent teachers, and she is one of the many that care greatly for our students. But we do have new teachers that will need to be onboarded and figure out how we do the things here. So that will fall to the department heads. Um, what I did not mention is Mr. Chamberlain and Mr. Murphy will split roles. So Mr. Chamberlain's main background is going to be the discipline and guidance, where Mr. Murphy's is going to be data and academics. So Mr. Chamberlain will be um, in charge of the deans and the success coaches, along with the guidance counselors, while Mr. Murphy will oversee the department heads and data. Uh, number two, uh, excuse me, number three is a positive school climate. And I don't think you can underestimate the effect that a climate has on a building. Um, you know, we've been through very tough few years. We all know that. And uh, it's very easy to fall into the negative. And it's very easy, you know, to place blame or to go forward. I can tell you um, that the decisions that I make and the decisions that I will continue to make will be for the kids and for the teachers. Um, and I think the teachers will realize, and I welcome everyone on this committee or anyone that's listening now to reach out to students that I've had, to reach out to teachers at the Parlin, uh, reach out to teachers that I worked with here. And I think you will say, although they may not agree with me all the time, and that's fine because you're doing something wrong if that's what happens, but that I always make decisions that are best for the kids, in my opinion. And I think if you, teach, if you treat the kids right and the teachers with respect and you support them, that's what builds that climate and that culture. Now, is this something overnight? No, this is a years long process. Um, but that's my goals for, that I set out for the foreseeable future. So some of the updates, um, speaking of security, which is um, huge. So uh, Lauren O'Connor, who uh, was mentioned earlier, um, I'm very happy to say that we are on the exact same page um, with a lot of the things that are going on. So for the first, um, at the front door, the back door, by the gym entrance, um, and inside the school, we will have security. Now that is a contracted security, so from 7 a.m. till 3 p.m., they will be at the front door. Now that role, is just to make sure they're vetting people that are coming in and directing them to the right place, which is usually the main office. So if you're coming into the office, you know, what's your business here? Oh, I'm going to dismiss my child, Dennis. All right, you go to the main office and you go through there. Um, it's just that added layer because it's not that it's, it, it could be unreasonable to think that deans or to have a dedicated staff member or a vice principal or the principal to be at that front door all the time. So I think that's very important that we have someone there and at the back door where most people enter probably for this meeting uh, by the gym entrance. We also are going to have a dedicated um, security that are going to be monitoring our cameras. And I'll talk a minute in the cameras so we can be more proactive. What usually happens, and it's no fault of anyone, is that if there's an incident in a building, whether it's vandalism or it could be a fight or it could be something you know, something goes missing, is we're very proactive, uh, excuse me, we're very reactive in the fact where, you know, we'll check the cameras and we'll see what's going on, and a lot of times time goes by and then it can be very difficult. What we thought was a good idea is to have someone monitoring that at all times, and that's for the safety of our students and the safety of our staff. We've also increased the number of interior and exterior cameras um, from a number of 64 to 110. We eliminate a lot of the blind spots that we got. Um, you know, you'll never eliminate all of them in a building that was built in 2007. Unfortunately, you know, as with technology moves, 
it gets outdated pretty quick. But we have a pretty good grasp on interior and exterior cameras in the school. All staff are required now to wear their IDs, uh, which gains them access to the building. So at the back of the school and at the front of the school, the students all must wear IDs this year. And the students' IDs do not give them access to the building, but what the students' IDs will give them access to is their lunch. So if you, like anything, if you're going through and you scan, that's how their lunch is going to be counted. So they no longer have to punch in a number or tell them, you know, or go through and say the name. If they have their ID on them and they scan it, it automatically registers them for lunch. Um, also for tardies, we invested in a new system through ASPEN, which is our student management system for students that are tardy. If you, um, so if you come in after uh, 8.07, what you'll do is you scan the ID automatically. It prints you out a late pass and automatically talks to our student management system and marks you in. So the teacher knows that you're here, we know that you're here, and then you have a pass to go back up to class. Um, and what was uh, implemented last year which was a huge um, you know, security increase, is that all doors are alarmed. So if you open a door, and that student, staff, anyone in the building, open the door during the undesignated times, what it does is it sounds, it's a very loud alarm, and it also takes your picture, and it sends that to the administration. So whether it be the deans, uh, myself, Mr. Chamberlain, and Mr. Murphy. We also introduced a new bell schedule, which is a return to home room, which I'm sure most everyone in this room is probably familiar with. A lot of us uh, went to high school with the home room, um, so we're bringing that back. The purpose of home room, uh, in my opinion, is we know who's in the building within the first seven minutes of the day. So our school day starts at 8 o'clock, home room goes from 8 to 8.07. So we know once those teachers post at 8.07, who's, who's absent and who's in, and who's in school. Um, so I think it's really important. What, that's a change from home room was first period. So first period could be a 78 minute block. And within that 78 minute block, the teachers had the ability to enter attendance. So if you were a student that came in at 840, that would be registered there. Um, so I'm hoping with the uh, inclusion of home room is one is also it's a great way to put out information to our kids you know we have them through um, our home rooms are completely randomized we try to make it as equitable as possible most home rooms go from you know A to Z we did it a little bit different which is going to be a pain in the butt when we start to do for graduation but we'll figure it out um, but from the home room, I think, is going to be a, a huge key for us. Most teachers in the building, a lot of teachers have a home room. Uh, we made the home rooms equitable across, so we have the same number of home rooms between the uh, four classes. And that will be the first place that students go. That is also their advisory. And advisory is something that we do every Monday. So their advisory class probably has changed over the last couple of years. And what that will be is now it's equal, because what we found when we went through the schedule and the rosters is that there were advisories of 10 and there were advisories of 34. So what we did is we tried to pare that down to make it as equitable as possible and leave some room for the students that we know we're going to get as the year goes on. Um, our intervention period we shortened to 30 minutes. Intervention is extremely important, uh, particularly for our special education students who get those extra supports during those times. So since we um, took off 10 minutes from that to allow for home room and to allow for some transitions, we just make sure that they meet more often so that they, um, that they meet the requirements of their uh, IEP or their, their educational plan. We also dropped from six lunches to five. Um, there's a lot of students in this building. So we, for years, ran with four lunches. But the cafeteria of a max, Mr. Murphy, was how much? was 570 seats, um, so we have, we have to do five lunches just so we can fit, and that gives us a buffer of about 150 um, for each lunch. You know, there's really no great way to split it up, but uh, I'll be sharing that with teachers tomorrow, we'll be sharing that with students tomorrow on how we're splitting up the lunches. We tried to be as uh, user-friendly and as easy as possible, but it's just the way, because we're such a large building, with five floors uh, to try and figure that out. We also added in transition times between the lunches. So there's three minutes before lunch and three minutes after. That's huge to get 
500 and some odd students out of the cafeteria and then bring in 500 and some odd other students into the cafeteria to try and get the tables clean, get the trash out, and move through because those custodians are hustling during those lunch blocks. So, um, so we built in those transition times. So it's three minutes, which may not seem a lot, but three minutes is better than nothing because we do still have to hit our um, required hours and any transitions, any time in homeroom, uh, are not counted to our educational hours. So we had to make sure that we stayed within our required hours. Uh, on the guidance front, we increased our guidance staff, which I know was a district initiative, from eight counselors to 10. We, uh, we now have guidance assigned by grade level, which they were because we are an academy school and we do have the pathways. The guidance counselors were in the pathways, which is a great idea in theory. But what happens is, is that causes confusion among students and sometimes teachers on what guidance counselor they should report to. So the pathways are still in existence. Our academy model is still in existence, but our guidance counselors are gonna be by grade level. So you know the one or the two, we have two per grade on a minimum, we have, that you know exactly who your guidance counselors are. So you can report to them if you need them. Um, we also have a dedicated who is uh, Ms. Hooks, is our dedicated department head now in our building, solely dedicated to this building. Our guidance is also located now in one area, which is the guidance suite. It's pretty tight in there for them, so they may not be happy with me. But I just want to make it as easy as possible for our students in a big building to find the right people when they need to find the right people. Uh, we also doubled our clinicians from three to six, which is our Elliott clinicians. Uh, we have two that are dedicated to our connections program, which I can talk about in a minute. Um, and also, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, our transcript audit which um, we set plans for overage, undercredited students. We also make sure that if students are in the pathways, that they are getting the right pathway classes that they need. Our goal um, is to make sure if they are in a pathway, such as nursing or health, that they get some, they get some type of industry standard when they graduate. So if you are going through the nursing program or the medical program, that you might be, when you get out, you might have like a CNA. Or if you get through um, in teaching, that there's something that we can actually give you besides our Everett High Diploma. And that's really where we're heading. We definitely have some work to accomplish as we're moving forward on that. Um, but we've hired a new, or the district, I haven't hired her, but uh, the superintendent hired a new director of CTE who comes with a ton of experience from Colorado. Um, and working on correcting some of the issues that we have in the pathways and making sure that as we move forward that everyone's where they got to be and that they actually graduate not only with their diploma but something if they were to go right into the workforce that they could use on the first day after they graduate which I think is really important and the entire purpose of us going to this academy model. When we first had the shift in Everett uh, it was myself, Ms. Sanchetta, it was um, the former principal, Mr. Norman, and Ms., uh, Mrs. Fallon. We went to Tampa, we went to Houston. What was the other one, Ms. Sanchetta, do you remember? I don't either. But we went somewhere else, and we saw um, the academies in action in other places. And so I've been trained in that. I'm a fellow in the um, Career Academies Coalition, so I have some background in the academies and when it got up and going. So we are going to look to increase that. We have some unbelievable pathways in this building now. Uh, some of our best and brightest students are in it, and it's, it's great. So we want to continue to make that strong and make sure that the kids are on the right path. So for our student supports, we have five deans. Uh, those are all the deans who are their major responsibility of the deans. I mean, they run the class. Uh, being a former dean myself, it's an extremely important position in the building. They are the go-to for almost everything. If you're a junior, senior, sophomore, freshman, I mean, they are your go-to person. They handle a lot of the discipline in the building for the grade levels. They'll, be, they'll handle a lot of the attendance in the grade levels. Um, so five, obviously we have uh, freshman through senior, and we have one for our Connections program. Our Connections program is an alternative program for students who may not fit in a particular school day. Um, so it's very, the classes are much smaller than what you might see. Our average class sizes can range from 
anywhere in our non-CTE classes from you know, 25 up to 31. Um, so in our connections program, those classes are much smaller. Um, it's also has a different um, you know, set of rigor. So instead of you know, kids being all around the building and different, we have the electives are taught by those teachers. So we, um, we actually revamped the connections program this year, or going into this year, we have a dedicated dean, we have two dedicated counselors, and a, get a dedicated guidance counselor to the Connections program. Um, it's intentionally, we start the program off small with a small number of students, and how it works is a referral process. It does, it's not set only for special education students, but really for students who may be struggling in a full academic course load during the day. Um, we also have four success coaches who are throughout the halls the entire day, making sure that the kids are getting where they have to go and supporting them. We have a new student engagement specialist who will oversee the four success coaches, which is a great addition for us because um, it's an individual that speaks Spanish, Portuguese, English, so can connect with our kids, um, you know, former athletes, so I think it's a, he's, a great, he's going to be a great addition to our school. He'll also be there, in the, he'll be in the cafeteria, and some of our unstructured time, which could be you know, in the CAF or during those transitions, where if you've been in a big high school or any high school or any school at all, that's where you tend to get some of the issues is during that unstructured time, during transitions or in the cafeteria. We also have added um, our alternative academic environment and grade recovery. Grade recovery is a continuation of what we've done here, which is Edmentum. We've had that for a while. Uh, but the alternative academic environment is a uh, alternative to outside suspension. So what this does is gives us the opportunity um, to keep kids in school and not at home. In school, we have the control. We have a dedicated staff member in that building. They have access to their teachers who can send them work and you know, make sure that they're getting it done. And so we have that. Now that could be a day long thing or that could be a period or two, okay? But it's a better option, all right, than putting the kid out for multiple days at a time. Now that can't happen if you violate our school rules because I do believe in accountability. I do believe in accountability, as I mentioned before, for our students and for our teachers. So that is a, it's a good uh, alternative that we have to just putting students out of the building and leaving them to their own devices for missing work or getting work done or being at a home where maybe mom is working and no one is there, even for high school students. So freshman orientation, I can't read that, and I just put that up there. But uh, I'm so glad, glad that you guys approved the freshman orientation because it's huge for our incoming ninth graders. Um, listening to the teachers, the staff, and even the former students themselves, that was something that they really miss. It just gives them a day, and it's a half day, from 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. to be in the building by themselves. Every freshman, and I don't care how tough they think they are, is going to be very nervous coming up into this building. It's a building with 2,300 students, with over 200 teachers, and it's a new environment for them. They're also, if they're coming up from our schools, you have the Parlin students who were together. Now they're gonna be with the Maddie kids, now they're gonna be with the Lafayette kids, and so they're all mixing in together. They may know each other, they may not. So what we do is we go through, and you guys don't have to worry about all that stuff uh, reading on there. What we do is we go through our A and B schedule uh, abbreviated. So our class is of 15 minutes. What we're going to do is outside in Glendale, and I'm looking, it, it may rain, so if it does, I have a plan B. But we're going to organize all the students into, our, into their home rooms. The teachers are going to bring them into the building. We're going to give them some information that they have to know, like what lunches they go to, you know, the simple stuff. If they want a locker, they can sign up for a locker. And then uh, we have, as uh, she had mentioned earlier, we have student ambassadors who speak multiple languages. They're, they're awesome. So they'll be um, assigned to our homerooms, and they're just going to help them navigate the building. Where's the gym? Where's the calf? Where's the guidance office? Where's the principal's office? Those things that we overlook that we may think are simple, but if you've never set foot, it's really important. So it just gives them that day to go through their entire schedule, um, A and B, for that day. And then on Thursday, we got the whole crew in here. So from 9 through 12, we'll all be in here on that Thursday. So I think it's a really good opportunity um, 
so grateful that you guys could do that for um, our freshman students because it's it's really needed. And as we move forward, we'll have the assemblies with the kids, and we'll go forward. Um, so it's a it's a great opportunity for the freshmen to come in, see our faces, and meet them before you have the upperclassmen in the halls with them. And I think that's it. Do you guys have any questions for me? Um, Madam Superintendent, through you, uh, call, um, Ms. Sunny. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I noticed that you mentioned about the lunches that the kids are um, going to have more. Do we have more custodians that are assisting with the cleanup and that three minute turnaround? Cause yes. Yeah. So, um, so meeting with the um, administration, what we did is we adjusted some hours. So we have currently five custodians. Um, we're very lucky to have the cleaning company here at the high school. So we don't have some of the challenges that the other buildings may have. But for the custodians, we have them. Um, very much front loaded during those hours. So we have that staff in the cafeteria because that's it's all hands on deck in there. Um, I also didn't mention one of my other uh, roles that I did for two years in Hanover Public Schools. I, I was a custodian, all right? So I know how important that is and I know how important the cleanliness of the building is and knowing the gentleman behind me too, we're not afraid to get in there and do it as a lot of, I know administrators in this district, you know, really get in and help to, make, to keep it clean. Over COVID, it opened up our eyes to a, a lot of things. So um, that's really important to me as the principal of the building. So we'll definitely try our hardest. But yes, yeah, so we front loaded the custodians during those hours. Great. And I'm also glad to hear that your safety's first because I think that's what we have to do first is making sure that the kids, the teachers, the workers, everyone's safe to, to follow through the school so they can have a great education. Um, so they can feel safe, you know, because last year when we heard, um, or this year, we heard the parents and kids how afraid they were. So I feel that with this, all these in, um, things in place, it's great to hear that. Yeah. You know, and I think parents are going to feel better that they hear that we have a little bit more um, security going on. And hopefully, whatever else you see, we, you know, please bring for, you know, to us if you need extra or whatever you need, because I know we're all for safety for the school. Yeah, no, thank okay. you. And... Um, exactly, and you know, over, like I said, it, you know, it wasn't just an Everett High problem, it wasn't just an Everett issue, um, but I believe the superintendent, you know, and myself coming up heard that loud and clear. I think that's obviously number one. So I think putting these structures in place will definitely help. But we also have to be realistic. We are an urban school with a lot of kids. So issues will arise. Mm -hmm. um, but I do believe in dealing with those issues and holding kids accountable, um, holding teachers accountable, and holding myself accountable um, in dealing with those issues. Because, you know, we're a big high school. And all of us in this room have been to high schools or big high schools, you know, large or small. And so issues come up. Um, so we try to be as proactive as we can, but sometimes when those issues arrive, it's just dealing with them. How do we get students back into the academic environment? How do they learn from that? You know, so we, we are still a school that practices restorative justice, you know, getting these kids back in, making them, you know, realize what they've done wrong and move forward. So, um, you know, it's really a whole student approach, you know, and adding these extra factors in, I hope give students parents and teachers a little bit of peace of mind as we enter the school year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sani. I have May DiMaria next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to uh, Principal Lynch, I just want to say uh, great presentation. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm excited to see this team in action. Um, I'm excited also to see the amount of security put in place uh, with the you know, doors being um, uh, secured by personnel and the amount of cameras in the schools. Um, so uh, I wish you well. And um, uh, the only the only really question I have is the 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 bathrooms. And I can talk to the superintendent about this, about uh, the cleanliness of the bathrooms, just to make sure that uh, we, we we stay on top of that. I don't know if we're bringing back some more resources for that during the day, but uh, we can talk about that another time. But I wish you uh, all uh, the the best of luck. Uh, you know, everyone's going to be. Uh, you know, criticizing everything you do, and so get used to it. Um, <laughs> um, but um, uh, so, you know, truly, uh, it's a great team. Yeah. Great team, and I wish you uh, the best. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mayor DeMarie. I have Mr. Barrows next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, uh, 
to Ms. Lynch. Thank you for your presentation as well. Uh, I'm going to bring it up. It's not a question, but a suggestion that I've brought it up before at this meeting. As you know, uh, perhaps the largest majority of our parents speak English as a second language. Many of them do not speak English at all. Uh, security, it is very important for this body. It's important to you. It's important to everyone. But we need to make sure that those parents understand the securities that are put in place in this building. So if I have my kid here who speaks Portuguese and, my, and I do not, I mean, who speaks Portuguese and I do speak Portuguese and I do not speak English, and my kid texts me and say, the, the, the teacher just locked the, the, the front door, we can't move, mom, we can't go anywhere. I'm going to go desperate because I think that someone is here with a gun or something. So we need to explain in our parents' first language the school security or school protocol or security protocols that we have here. Oh, don't worry. It is a lockdown. So as a parent, I know what a lockdown is. So I know that there's not a man with a gun inside of this building, but it's actually it's a security in place that we are preventing uh, that to happen. So I think I, I brought that up before here, and I and, and bring that to you as a new principal. It's something for you to think about it and see how we can implement. Because I remember when we had parents here last year, last school year, this year, uh, some of the Spanish speakers, one of them crying, and they're exactly what that's what happened. Her daughter, in, I think it was in a lockdown that we had, I don't remember. Uh, the issue that we had, but her daughter texted her. She was, of course, calling the principal's office. You know, the phone was like ringing, was, you know, everyone going crazy. She left her work and that's where she was crying. Actually, when she was talking to us here, she was like shaking, just remembering that time. If she knew that we were in a lockdown and what a lockdown is, I'm sure she would have calmed her kid down shouldn't be crying desperately, leaving her, her uh, office or her workplace in Boston, coming to Everett, couldn't get into the building because the building, of course, was closed. So I think it's extremely important that we explain to our parents what this is all about. Like, it, it's not only a, a, a security or a student handbook they're going to hand it to them because they're, gonna, they're not going to read. Many of them do not speak English uh, uh, well. Uh, so we need, I don't know how, perhaps is a parent-teacher conference or, I, I, I really don't know how. Uh, that's for, you know, the great mind that you have along with the superintendent and her team uh, to figure out how we're going to do it. But we really, we really need that in order for our parents to, to understand what are the security protocols that we have in place. Um, because otherwise, you know, if an issue happens, we are going to get parents desperately, uh, uh, right, trying to figure out what it is when it's just a, I don't know, a lockdown or something so, similar. Yeah, no, and it, it's, it's a great point that you bring up, uh, and I'm glad you brought it up because I agree. I think that I'm pretty transparent on when I go in, and I think communication is very important with the teachers, with the parents, with the students. Um, so you bring it up. So you bring up the, you know, the idea of a lockdown or a shelter in place. Um, so a lockdown is very serious. If, 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 if the school goes into lockdown, uh, that there's an imminent threat, either most likely in the building or trying to get in the building. Um, a shelter in place in a big school like this, we could go into shelter in place multiple times in a week. And it doesn't mean that, the, that there's any danger or that there's any harm. It could be that a student was hurt and we don't need an audience, so we go shelter in place so that you know, teachers and students are within their classrooms and medical personnel can come in. Um, you know, a lockdown, that's when we're approaching on ALICE protocols, so, which uh, the teachers will get a refresher on tomorrow and we're going to also work with our students. But you're right, because there is a lot of confusion. You know, I have three kids myself, and, you know, I'm an educator, but my wife is a nurse, and if I asked her to tell me the difference between a lockdown or a shelter in place, she would have no idea. And if the school reached out and said that the school is in shelter in place, 
she would freak out and call the school and try to show up and you know try to be there. So I, underst I understand that. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of um, communication from our end in saying that shelter in place, a couple reasons we go into shelter in place. One is there, th there could be a threat outside the community. There could have been a bank robbery. There could have been something going on. And we want to keep our kids and our staff in the building to stay safe. So what does that mean? No one can come in or go out. That's including parents until the shelter in place is lifted. Uh, we could also go into shelter in place, like I said, if there's a medical issue. We have students that may be suffering from anxiety and have an anxiety attack, and we just need to clear that area out, get kids back in their classrooms, so we can deal with a student who may be in crisis. So in a big school with 2,300 kids, that can happen multiple times. Coming from the Parland, which was another big elementary school, we would go into shelter in place for those same issues. Now, a lockdown, completely different ball game. Lockdown, there could be a threat with inside the bill. That's an imminent threat to go into lockdown. Um, unfortunately, the high school did have a lockdown last year because of a threat of, you know, a possible shooting or a bomb threat. And, you know, that's why we train our staff, you know, to look for certain things, to remember certain things, and to act appropriately to go through. A lot of that communication comes from the main office. Um, and, you know, in those instances. And so I'm, I'm glad you brought up the, the other point for parents who may not speak English. We are also, we invested in a communication called Talking Points. Talking Points, if everyone's familiar with uh, the elementary, it's called Class Dojo. It's similar to Class Dojo, which I absolutely love Class Dojo. This is a step up where um, tomorrow, I'm actually going to introduce it to our staff. A lot of staff within the um, artist staff are using it. So what it does, it's a text message. So you send it out, and you send it out in English. Whatever language is listed as the home language in the student management system automatically translates to that language. And if the parent texts you back, it automatically translates back from Portuguese to English, from Haitian Creole to English, from Spanish to English, or English to Spanish. It's great. Um, you know, we speak dozens of languages in this building, and anything that uh, our student management system has, it goes back. It also keeps a record in analytics. So as a school principal, it's great to see who's reaching out to the parents. Our parents reaching out to our teachers. It keeps that record. Um, so, you know, we have a uh, Lion Bridge, which is a, you know, a phone call communication. But most people, a lot of people text now. They get it instantly on their phone. It's free. Uh, so parents can download the app, and it's automatically free. The district purchased that, and it's great. So that's a communication that comes out. And to, to your point, if there's an incident in the building, I have the ability to, to send it to the whole building. So I can send to every parent, every um, student, every teacher in the building, which is a little bit better than X2 in email because whether or not you check your email, that's one. And number two, if, you're, if we're in a crisis, if we're in an emergency, you're not going to look on your email. But you are probably going to have your phone. So, um, and that's the same thing with the all calls that go out from the district or the school. So it's a great point. Um, coming from the Parlin, which is, um, you know, eight, over 85% of our students did not speak English as their first language. Um, you know, I'm very sensitive to that, so the communication to the parents from the school is really important to us, too. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Mr. Lynch, and welcome aboard. Um, we are excited. And you touched on it, so, and I will say it to every building leader, I say it over and over, communication and parents are your allies. And I know a lot of times, like when students, you know, you start to kind of push that independence in the high school, so maybe talk to the parents less, but I, I think there is a place for parents and families to really support and be allies in supporting our students' education. So I'm so happy to hear about talking points because I've heard of that from other districts, so it's great news. And then the other piece that I always say is, I'm glad you mentioned restorative justice, but proactive regular restorative justice so that we're preventing the issues or in that when an issue does come up we we already have the diet, we already have the vocabulary we already have the language and the skills to mediate it in the best way for the student and I remember talking to you years ago um, about your background it was actually when the CTE advisory board so oh, yeah, yeah. it was like 2015, 14. Yeah. And, you know, we had that conversation about 
you know, students sometimes get in a path and you have to disrupt that. So um, we're, we talk about safety, but I think building those skills in um, restorative justice and just making that an everyday practice that's practiced throughout the building all the time proactively prevents a lot of those issues and increases the psychological safety. That is also what we've talked about and why we supported bringing on additional guidance counselors. And um, I'm really happy to, you know, I'm a parent of a high school student. I've had, this will be my 10th year as, as an Everett High High School student uh, parent. Um, so I'm excited and we're excited for my student for Thursday, but Welcome aboard. Thank you. No, and it's and it's great, and um, I'm glad you brought that up too, because an enormous part of what I do, what I believe in, what the majority of our teachers believe in, is building a relationship with the kids. Now we add the security for their safety, of course, but I want our kids to want to come to this building and want to learn and want to, you know, have fun and sports and clubs and activities, and get them involved in something, uh, whether it be whether it be a sport, whether it be a club or whether it be just a trusted adult in the building that they connect with. And, you know, everything. And I, it's not just schools. It's business. It's everything else. It comes down to relationships, relationship building, and, you know, making those connections. And, you know, that's extremely important. And I know that's always been a huge uh, initiative in this building, and that's something that I will continue. Um, I just, it's, it's very important to connect with the kids, to build those relationships, to get that mutual respect and trust um, because what I've learned, although I do not live in this city, is that Everett students are uh, among some of the most loyal that I've ever been around. You know, if you, sometimes you show them just a little bit, and they'll literally go through a wall for you. And, um, you know, forming those connections with those kids, I think, is really, really important. So I don't want it to think that, you know, yes, believe me, I want to make sure that we're a safe building. I want to make sure that, you know, we're doing the right thing. But it's also, I want this to be an enjoyable place for both students and teachers. I, I mean, we work with kids. What's better? You know, you're a teacher, you're an educator, you know, I'm a principal. I probably have the worst job in the building, but whatever, all right? But you want to enjoy coming in. You want to enjoy, you know, making those connections. So I think that's really important. It's something I'm going to push. That gets back to that positive school climate, which, believe me, we're going to have rough days. We are. It's a very, very tough look around in the nation, look around, very difficult. Teachers are leaving in droves. You know, it's very difficult to find people that want to be educators. So the ones that we have, I'm going to treat right because they do right by the kids. So I want this to be enjoyable to work with them. So um, that connection building and restore, that's, that's what it's all about. Mr. Lynch, good evening. Thank you for the, the thorough uh, um, presentation that you provided to us this evening. Uh, really excited to see a lot of the new uh, enhanced uh, measures that will be in place this year. And with your leadership and with the leadership of Mr. Chamberlain and Mr. Murphy, um, I really believe that we're moving in a great direction this year. I, had we had some of them last year, things might have been different, right? But we're in a new stage, we're at a new, new state. Uh, and again, reading an editorial this summer in the newspapers, you can't believe what the newspapers put out in this city, unfortunately. But the fact of the matter is, contracted services for the doors that you have that you spoke of tonight, is that an outside service you said? Yeah, so provided? it's uh, American Alarm is the one that's at the, um, is the contractor for the door. So those are already in place. We do our own monitoring of that. So they installed that. And if I'm speaking out of turn, Ms. O'Connor, I'm correct. So they installed that on there, but we do all the monitoring. So if someone opens up the door and the alarm sounds, it comes to us. So it's not going to an outside agency. They may have reports that they send to us upon request, but all of that is up to us to uh, enforce. Okay. So, so they're just the software. So, they, yeah, so, so there's a yeah. So there's a security system that was set up through us, on our computers, you know, with us, and the other ones in. You have the security monitoring system, which does the cameras, and it does the um, and they're alarmed on the doors. But all the monitoring takes place with us. Okay. So you know, if an alarm goes off, it comes to us. If the alarm goes off in the in the front building, it goes off. The cameras, that's all us. 
So will we have somebody sitting in a room watching cameras? Mm -hmm. we, we will have a staff member. Yep. Um, okay. I, I, and if, 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 if I can uh, make a motion, invite up Ms. O'Connor. Motion uh, made and second to invite Ms. Uh, O'Connor up. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. Madam Chairwoman, thank you for allowing me to uh, invite Ms. O'Connor up. Um, but I think this is an important, top, important point because I think probably the number one factor that I heard as a first year uh, school committee member was the safety at the high school and what could we do differently. And then again, as I alluded to, reading an editorial in the newspaper over the course of the summer raised some question on what, what exactly was going on. And so I want to just kind of get to where we are today the past is behind this thing, you know, it be, is gone. Uh, but this is a new service that we've, we're implementing this year, correct? To have somebody monitoring the cameras? Yes, so to Mr. Lynch's point, we hired Madison Security. Um, they're gonna be at the doors doing the access control and the vetting, as well as we'll call them a command center um, control operator. So that person, we've designated a room for them. Uh, we're getting a video wall. They have a laptop, a PC, multiple um, computers for them to watch all the cameras on. They'll be monitoring all the door alarms in real time. So when a door alarm goes off, they will see that student in real time. They're going to have a radio. They're going to be on the radio with the success coaches, the deans, um, so that it's proactive and not because in the past, the emails come out maybe five to seven minutes after they actually open the door at that point they're already gone. Um, so we will be have somebody doing that from 7 to 3 p.m. every day inside of that um, command center. In Ms. O'Connor, uh, there will be a person at the doors, the front door, the back door, and an actual person from Madison mm -hmm. that will be there uh, monitoring these, cam I mean, excuse me, monitoring these doors during those hours. There won't be yes. faculty of the school that will get pulled away to go do some other emergency it will be somebody designated just to those yes, to those doors. Exactly. There'll be somebody there um, during the morning when the students come in. We spoke about staff members helping uh, to ensure all students and staff members entering the building did have their um, badge on them, their ID badge, and they were displaying that. Um, but other than that, Madison Security will be uh, manning those doors throughout 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. throughout the day. I, th I think it's tremendous. I think this is. Uh, I think this is what some of uh, my colleagues and I had hoped would uh, be able to come. And I think that this is uh, gives us a new, fresh start to the coming school year, and gives us an opportunity to to write the past and move forward. And uh, I think safety, as I said, is number one. And and also homerooms, bringing back homerooms, I think is so important. Uh, being you know. Uh, just gathering in your in your small group at the beginning of the day in that seven minute increment, like Mr. Lynch said, gives the uh, the administrators the ability to know who exactly is in the building, and uh, and kickstart the day in a positive manner of knowing who's here and, and, and that they belong here. So I think bringing back homerooms was uh, something else that was uh, really important to uh, hear that we're going to be able to do that. So uh, Mr. Lynch, again, I wish you the best of luck, you and uh, both of your assistants and uh, with your leadership and the assistants and Mr. Connor, I think we'll have a new school year and I look forward to it. I just, one last question I'm gonna ask is, and we heard it this evening, are there any students in hallways or in other places learning that are not in a, a classroom setting uh, throughout your building? Because I'll be asking every principal that question as they come forward throughout the course of the school year. No, so we, we have transformed some spaces that were not classroom spaces. Yep. Um, you know, we have transformed them, but I would never put students or staff in a place where I didn't feel that they could adequately learn or feel safe. And we, and I agree with you, and we approve those transition, transition places throughout the building. Some of them not desirable, but we did what we had to yeah. do to make additional space in the crowd. But there's nobody sitting on milk crates or on the floors and hallways learning uh, throughout the course of the day. That, is that a correct, fair statement, Mr. Lynch? I mean, yeah. I mean not right now, not with the start. I mean, as long as we have And I'm yes. positive it won't happen. I'm sure my colleagues and I will ensure that we do whatever we can to support the superintendent to ensure that that doesn't happen here at the high school. Thank you. Okay. Um, do you have a yeah. yeah, I do. 
Yep. Leave it. You leave it. Yeah, let it stay. It's for both. Mm -hmm. I have Mr. Manning for two questions. Mr. No, I, I did not. Just Mr. Lynch, that's all. You stayed in the room. Okay. I'm up next, anyways. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so well, thank you to all, all you and your whole team for being up here, uh, Mr. Lynch. I um, I just want to echo a lot what Mayor De Maria said earlier. I mean, I think first of all, your presentation was amazing. I think it was great. I love your passionate, what, your, your passion, the way you're just talking here and stuff. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I've known you a little bit, but. If I didn't know you, I mean, I thought, I mean, if I was on the football field with you, you'd definitely get me, uh, get me going there, <laughs> pumped up there to play for you. And but I just want to um, wish you the best. And like I said, I just, just your leadership sh skills that you're showing now, like I said, it's just a small part. Of what I think you're gonna, you're gonna bring here to Everett High School. I think is gonna be amazing. And I, I, I uh, like I said, I wish you all the best in the world. But. I'm so glad we got you, and I just want to thank the superintendent for making, I think, a, a great move here with the whole team. So I just thank you, and anything at all I can do, please reach out. Thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. And, um, you know, uh, I hope I don't disappoint, you know. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the school year. I have, you know, of course, trepidation entering. It's the nerves. I think I need the, the kids in front of me. Um, and the teachers in front of me to get going. I've been I've been antsy to get going. Um, it's been a quick turnaround. You know, it's um, you know it's only been six weeks. I think um, you know I'll say it. I think we've accomplished a lot in that time um, without the kids. Between the schedule, hiring of staff. I mean, there was a lot that got on. The work is definitely not done. Um, you know, we're still looking for some teachers. So it's just it's very difficult in some fields, but. I think, you know, in this build up here and, you know, talking to you guys, you guys have all been very supportive, which makes me feel really good. Um, and it gives me confidence going forward to do that. So, no, thank you. Appreciate it. I have, uh, uh, questions. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, you know, I wanted to ask you, we, we, there were big problems, not big, but at the basketball games last year, if you would, I think Malden caused a lot of problems. and. Um, it's something that we had one policeman there. Wasn't that right, Stan? There was one policeman, I think. At, at every game, there's one policeman. Maybe we, I would hate to see a fight break out because there's a lot of bad blood between kids from Malden and Everett, and I don't know how it got like that. But uh, anyway, so, I mean, that's going to be coming up. So do you think there's any way, maybe, Lauren, that we could get more police presence? It deters them. For those games, the certain games, you can talk to Stanley, he can tell you we get 1,000 yeah. people up there. You know, one cop isn't going to control 1,000 people. Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually spoke with the athletic director, Tammy Turner, recently about that, about hiring more uh, police details and police presence, as well as um, staff members. Um, so she hires some staff members for the games. We'll have security at the back door. Um, but yes, we'll definitely look into that, for sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm sorry, I'll be brief, but through you to Ms. O'Connor and also Mr. Lynch. Um, so I, I know we approved in the budget in the spring the um, security. And one of the questions I had was, you know, because I did have concerns, are they going to be dressed like security? Like how will it present to the students? Uh, and then also you just talked about nerves on the first day. You have students, not just in the ninth grade, but you also have newcomer students, and this is their first, sometimes, introduction into a big urban mm -hmm. building. Um, and so sometimes instruction, even you know executive functioning issues, sometimes an in instruction, you don't process right away. And especially if it's in English only, or you have some type of disability. So will the security team be aware of this and like recognize I, I don't I just don't want it to be like I, I don't ever want a student scared to come into the building no absolutely and so we had a meeting with the um, account managers for Madison security they came, they came they spoke with myself uh, the assistant principals deans um, the SROs we all had a discussion um, obviously customer service is a big thing just greeting them with a hello a friendly face smile 
Um, so they were well aware of that, as well as language. It would be nice to have somebody that spoke the um, multiple languages, Portuguese, Haitian Creole. Um, so we discussed having some offices that had that ability. Um, but yes, it, they're going to be in polo. So I know it's all about optics. Um, so instead of the normal police military style, um, it's going to be a polo that says security on the back with either um, khaki pants or um, just dark pants. Um, but they're going to be more of a just making them feel safe, making them feel, um, you know, good to come to Another the relationship. Exactly. Like another person to build a relationship. Exactly, exactly. Right, and, that's, and we did talk about that. And the other, is, um, so they won't respond to our incidents either. So that's our school staff. You know, if there is an issue, if there is, you know, a physical altercation, if there's anything like that, that will be our, stu our, our school staff, which would be our deans, you know, the assistant principals, even myself. Um, they will not be responding to that. So they're, they're very much Observing. the eyes and ears, mm -hmm. you know, and making sure that when parents, students come in, they know where to go. And it's just that extra set of eyes. I mean, I'm a, a big believer in getting the bodies out there, and the, you know, and, you know, see something, say something, and you get through and just make sure that we're all safe. Um, so we did, Lauren and I did have that discussion, um, you know, with the superintendent about the optics of that and that police uniform, and we thought it was best that, you know, like a regular poll, they're going to be dressed like a teacher, except they'll be differentiated because they have, the, you know, the security and their location in the building. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, seeing no other questions of uh, Ms. O'Connor. Make a motion and we excuse Mr. Ms. O'Connor and Mr. Lynch with customary thanks and ask that his, Mr. Lynch's presentation be placed on file. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Madam Chairman, do we have any guests here that on the list that we need to take before so they're not waiting um, out of order? Do and we if have we do, anybody here that's so I can take care of that because we have a few things right okay. now. Okay. okay. Madam Chairman, we make a motion that we suspend the rules and take item. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to take Ms. O'Connor. Sorry. Where are we? Like, she'd like to take Ms. O'Connor first. Okay, we do number three, and then we'll do the special edit too. Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, I'm going to call her up. Okay, um, if I could have the, uh, well, well, it's, not, it's we don't have, you, if you could just read the next order of business, Madam Superintendent. Yes, so thank you. So item number three is approval of the hiring of the EPS attendance officers. So, um, Adding more attendance officers has been a priority expressed by many people during the last year, and we were happy to include these positions into our budget. These two additions to our team will help us address every aspect uh, related to student enrollment and the essential residency component of our registration process. As per Mass General Law, attendance officers do need to be approved by the school committee. Um, just so that you are aware procedurally, it's normally a yes, no vote, and a no vote must be accompanied by a rationale. Uh, before we make our recommendations, I would like to invite up our security director, Lauren O'Connor, who will be supervising the attendance officers and who also oversaw the hiring process for her to give you a brief overview of the process and its results uh, before I ask your approval to hire a second these on that? Second. Motion is made and second to invite Ms. O'Connor, Ms. O'Connor, back up. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Madam Superintendent. All right. Good evening again, Director of Security, Lauren O'Connor. So the attendance officer position, we had two of them posted. Um, myself, the Everett High School Assistant Principal, Stanley Chamberlain, and the current attendance officer, Keith Luongo, uh, who's been in the role for nine years in the city of Everett. Um, with his expertise, I had him on the panel. We interviewed seven different candidates. Um, all interviews followed the rubric provided by HR. Um, all questions were based around experience, uh, interpersonal skills, um, knowledge of the position and what it entails, um, familiarity with the city and the diversity in the Everett school system. Um, after conducting that, we tally up all the points for each person. Um, these two candidates were, had the highest point total, um, as well as they were both formerly in the position 
uh, as attendance officer in 2019-2020. Um, both got glowing recommendations from school leadership um, when they were in that position, as well as scoring the highest through our rubric. Um, so do I announce who they are? <laughs> Sure. Okay, so the two that we're recommending is uh, Kevin McCarthy and uh, Thomas Abrazé. Um, again, they were in the position, they have dealt with the court system, they have dealt with the residency checks, the home visits. Um, they kind of, they know where to put all the notes, how to follow up. Um, and so, you know, they had a great interview and, and beyond that, they also, uh, like I said, school leadership said they worked very well with them, uh, with the guidance department, um, as well as the assistant principals and principals. Um, so that's how we got to um, that conclusion. All three of us had voted on the rubric and they scored the highest out of the seven candidates. I'll make a motion to approve the two recommended candidates. I'll no second. Motion is made and seconded to uh, approve the two recommended candidates, and I would ask the clerk to call the roll. <clears throat> Mr. Barrows. Yes. Mayor DeMaria. Yes. Ms. Lambert. Yes. Mr. LaMonica. Yes. Mr. Mangan. Yes. Mr. Marcus. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Ms. Sarney. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. So move nine zero. Are you nine in the affirmative? Uh, so we have uh, moved on uh, hiring uh, the two additional offices, and I'd entertain a motion to excuse. Do you have a question of Ms. O'Connor? Connor. Okay. Um, Ms. O'Connor, I just want to say that Encore Boston Harbor made a grave mistake letting you go, but I am ecstatic that you're. Uh, doing security here in our city, in our schools. So, thank you uh, so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you for applying and taking the job. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, excuse with the customary thanks. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The, you, all right, you can go home now, Lauren. Thank you very much. You, Madam Chair, we may suspend the rules thank and take the point of information, Madam Chairman. Yeah, absolutely. I just wanted to know. Um, why were we uh, approving these positions? Can we so as per Mass General Law, there are several positions that do require the approval of the school committee. Right, so it can sometimes be, it's like assistant superintendents, um, the athletic director, attendance officers. Okay. So yeah, this happens Great. to be one of the ones underneath that. Great question, can, I get a, can we get a copy of that? Or what? You got that. Is that in the book? Yeah. All right, great. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yeah, thank you very um, much. And just one final note on the attendance officers. One of the things we'll be bringing in a subsequent presentation to the school committee is the data that we have found um, and the number of home visits that we've been able to do, whether it was for five attendance officers, one attendance officers, so we can start to get a better handle of where we are. Um, as far as students who are coming in from outside of Everett in our schools. Another thing we are doing is we would like to bring to this committee a revamped residential policy. Um, so I do want to just commit to this uh, body and to the community that is this is something we are going to make a priority this upcoming school year. Great. It's great to hear, thank you. Wonderful news. Um, go ahead. Did you want to take something out of order? Madam Chair, we'll uh, suspend the rules and take item uh, numeral 10 out of order, uh, uh, number one. So thank you. Yeah. Roman numeral 10 is unfinished business, and item number one is a special education update. So I would respectfully request that we invite up Mr. Donahue, who had given a presentation at our last meeting in July, um, in case anybody has any questions for him about the special education process or the start of the year. So move. Second. Motion is made and seconded to invite Mr. Donahue up again. Oh, not, no, you haven't been up today, huh? No. no. Okay. Well, Thank you're not you. getting all your steps in, I guess. So, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. Mr. Donahue, thank you for coming here tonight. Thank you. So, do you want me to make the presentation again or just no. take questions based on the presentation? Uh, we, since we've already seen the presentation, uh, do, does anybody want to watch it again? Yeah. You no. Do? No, but he <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, if anybody has any questions, uh, just kind of give me the little nod. 
Mr. McLaughlin. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Madam Chairwoman, um, through you to Mr. Donahue. Good evening, Mr. Donahue. Good evidening uh, Mr. Donahue, uh, as we, as I asked last time, and I'll, I'll ask again, uh, as we start the beginning of the new school year, have we seen our enrollment of um, special education students increase in the coming year from the previous year? We've seen increases in schools, but we haven't seen an overall drastic increase at the district level. We're right around the number that we're usually at. Uh, we see a low number to start every school year because obviously the seniors graduate and it takes a while for the preschool students to enroll to be identified to turn three years old. So we're at about 1,207 students right now. I expect that to be probably around 1,230 students after Labor Day. And then I think the highest we got last year was 1,304 students. So we're kind of projected to be right around that number. We've been consistently there the four years that I've been special ed director. Okay, and Mr. Mr. Donahue, is there an increase for outside services for um, students? Meaning like outside placement? Or, yes. Uh, we're seeing an increase in outside placement more having to do with um, DCF place students or students being placed for more severe mental health issues in the recent year. But again, that number right now is at 94 students. And usually we average anywhere from about 105 to 110 students at any given point during the school year. Okay. And how many students are, I'm sorry, I just drew a blank, I apologize. How many students are we moving, up? are we transporting? Um, I would say, I think we're transporting, so I think we're transporting 94 kids, but out of the 94, we probably transport maybe anywhere from 80 to 85 because some parents drive their students. We also transport homeless students. I don't have those figures right now, but then I know that we're seeing an increase in student placements based on issues at home or based on mental health issues, and we're transporting those students who are safe to return to school. We're making every effort to keep them in their home school. So right now, we have four cases pending on that. But I think probably around the middle of September, we would have a better idea of homeless outside the district and out of district and what we're transporting. But we're pretty much back up to the numbers that we were at pre-COVID. Okay, that's what I was trying to yeah. trying to compare yeah. where we were pre-pandemic to where we are yeah. going into the coming. Yeah, school. all the out of district schools are in person. A lot of the students that may have had doctor's notes last year, or may have been like medically fragile, or or homebound, or any of those things, we're seeing those students return to school. So this is really the first year going in that it feels as normal as it can be post COVID. Okay, Mr. Donahue, the Devons School. Has the student enrollment increased for students to attend? Right now we're at 38 in-district students, four students from other districts, and we have six referrals for the Devons. So that will bring the Devons possibly by the second or third week of September to around 48, 49 students. And we've seen that go anywhere from 47 to about 55 students on average. So we're right in the spot for that. We may see a small increase at the Devons this year, because we did add a pre-K to two, no, a K to two ASD classroom. So we were able to take another space, add a teacher, add an additional couple paraprofessionals, and open up a new classroom down the Devons to try to support more students in district. Okay, and do we have any status update on the Devon School uh, lease or the movement of the building? Knowing that we have the same number of students who need the services is obviously it, there's a need for that wouldn't be that, his that wouldn't be, it usually, wouldn't be his but he would be involved in discussion as special education yeah. director correct madam superintendent you can chime in if you'd like no i was at the uh, i was at the presentation for the um with the city council meeting but i don't know i kind of avoid that stuff but i don't have much information on that yeah <laughs> fair fair enough i'm just trying to show as long as the building's open i keep sending kids so fair enough. i'm just trying to show where we were pre-pandemic yeah. to where we shut down and where we are going in the we're seeing school year. things get back to the numbers that were there pre-covid kind of going into the um the 20 school, 2020 school year thank you Mr. Donahue. any other questions of uh mr mayor just a comment. Uh, 
Mr. Donahue was a vice principal, as many some of us know, at the Lafayette School when my daughter was there. And he was a rock star, just to let you know, when he was the vice principal, every kid, I think, knew him. And I'm sure he misses uh, being a principal or vice principal, but I have to say, I know you were put in this role, maybe unwillingly. Uh, you've done a great job uh, doing this for the last four years, so we appreciate, appreciate it. And I'm sure someday you probably want to get back into these school buildings with these kids, but uh, thank you for, for what you do, Bill. I had a good week last year covering the Cavarian for one week. All right. No, but it's a good Didn't job. Didn't you used to wear bow ties, too? No. No, that was not me. Okay. No, that's, I take a little offense to that. No, but it wasn't me. I, I can't tie a bow tie, but. Okay. All no, right. It's a different right. job, but it's a, you get to help a lot of families in this job, and a lot of things more. you got to go through, and more paperwork. It's worth it because you get to you have more of an effect on families, and you you can help families quicker. So, it's something that is different, but you have to understand it. It does have its benefits too. A motion is made and seconded to excuse Mr. Donahue with the customary thanks. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Um, thank you, Mr. Donahue. You can go home. Thank you. Appreciate Are you it. Well done, well. Yes. Okay. Sorry. No, that's fine. No. Okay. If I could ask the superintendent to revert back to the regular order of business, Madam Superintendent. Absolutely. So item number four is approval to close the student activity accounts for the American Red Cross Club, the Haitian Club, and the Life Skills Club. This Make a motion. <laughs> motion is made. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. On those opposed? Motion. Roll call vote? You want a roll call? Uh, on the motion. I just oh, okay. All um, right. I'm sorry. You know, I'm 63. I'm out of hearing. <laughs> Go ahead, Mrs. Lambert. No, no, I apologize. I, I just wanted to, when was the last activity? I don't know if that's what you were going to say. Three years ago. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, in well, favor. we've already voted in. Um, Madam Superintendent, can you read the next order of business? Absolutely. Item number five is approval to open a student activity account for the Fashion Club. Fable. Second. Second. Motion is made and second for Fable action on the order, on the item. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. You are so moved. Madam Superintendent. Thank you. Item number six is the acceptance of the Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV grants for $2 million, $2 million. Six thousand seven hundred and eight dollars, two hundred twenty-eight thousand two hundred eleven dollars, four hundred thousand eight hundred fifty-two dollars, and one hundred thirty-two thousand six hundred fourteen dollars, respectively. Make favorable a motion. Action. Favorable Second action. the motion. That's Motion's a roll call. Motion made and second for uh, favorable action. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Barrows. Yes. Mayor De Maria. Yes. Miss Lambert. Yes. Mr. Lamonica. Yes. Mr. Mangan. Yes. Mr. Marcus? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Sarney? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. We have nine members in the affirmative. You have so moved. Madam Thank Superintendent. Thank you. Item number seven is the acceptance of the Summer Acceleration Academy grant for $160,000. Fable action. Second. Motion is made and second for fable action. Clerk, will call the roll. Mr. Barrows? Yes. Mayor De Maria. Yes. Ms. Lambert. Yes. Mr. LaMonica. Yes. Mr. Mangan. Yes. Mr. Marcus. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Ms. Sarney. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. Uh, you have so moved. Madam Superintendent. Thank you. Item number eight is the acceptance of the STEM Constellation Scholarship Grant for $10,000. Fable, fable action. action. Second motion. Motion is made and seconded for fable action. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Barrows? Yes. Mayor De Maria? Yes. Ms. Lambert? Yes. Mr. LaMonica? Yes. Mr. Mangan? Yes. Mr. Marcus? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Sarney? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Not in the affirmative. You have so moved. Madam Superintendent? Thank you. Item number nine is the acceptance of the Perkins grant for $116,000. Fable Sorry. action. Second. Motion is made in second. Fable action. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Barrows? Yes. Mayor De Maria? Yes. Ms. Lambert? Yes. Mr. LaMonica? Yes. Mr. Mangan? Yes. Mr. Marcus? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Ms. Sarney? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Not in the affirmative. You have so moved. 
Madam Superintendent, can you read the next order of business? Thank you. Item number 10 is the acceptance of a fiscal year 23 CTE equitable access grant in the amount of $68,950. Yes, favorable action on the motion. Second. Motion is made in second for favorable action. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Barrows. Yes. Mayor DeMaria. Yes. Ms. Lambert. Yes. Mr. LaMonica. Yes. Mr. Mangan. Yes. Mr. Marcus. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Ms. Sarney. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Now in the affirmative, you have so passed. Uh, Superintendent, if you could read the next order of business. Yes, the, uh, number 11 is the acceptance of a $10,000 gift from the estate of Jerome L. Listernick. Favorable the, action on the motion, a letter of thanks to be sent to the estate. Of Mr. Motion Listernick. is made in second. second. Favorable action on the order with a letter of thanks be sent. Clerk will call on the, the, mo on the motion. Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Jerome Listernick, was he a former superintendent of schools? He, um, a doctor? Was he a doctor? doctor. He was a doctor. Right. He went to Harvard College, Tufts Medical Graduate, right. and Everett High. Yes. Born and raised in Everett, right? That yes. Is, yeah, right. That is correct. And these are funds, just um, so you are aware, are for the purpose of, and I quote, the Everett High School Band to be used only for the purpose of providing musical instruments um, to be uh, used by or loaned to students. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Barrows. Yes. Mayor Di Maria. Yes. Ms. Lambert. Yes. Mr. LaMonica. Yes. Mr. Mangan. Yes. Mr. Marcus. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Ms. Sarney. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. You have so passed. I'd ask the superintendent to read the next order of business. Thank you. Item number 12 is the approval of the management liability insurance policy renewal. Favorable action on the motion. Second. second. Motion is made in second for favorable action on the, uh, on the item. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Barrows. Yes. Mayor Di Maria. Yes. Ms. Lambert. Yes. Mr. LaMonica. Yes. Mr. Mangan. Yes. Mr. Marcus. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Ms. Sarney. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Nine in the affirmative. You are so passed. I'd ask the superintendent to read the next order of business. Thank you. Item number 13 is the approval for the Everett Adult Learning Center to hold ESL classes at Everett High School as they have done in the past. Fable, fable action. action. No motion. Mo motion is made in second for fable action. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. On, on, the, on the motion? Uh, I, yes, I, I just Mayor. want to thank Roberta Velasquez, a few, who uh, heads this up and uh, uh, does a wonderful job making sure that our residents in our community uh, get the services they need. So I just want to thank Roberto for his work. And, and Kat Katarina. Katarina, not sure. I mean, yeah, the whole group. Yep. Yeah. She's Sorry. wonderful, too. Um, she got me in trouble, but uh, yeah. Roberto, Katarina. The whole yeah, place. well, I, I, if I didn't name, name Katarina, you would have really been in trouble. Yeah, you'd be in trouble. So, <laughs> so uh, we've already... We've already voted on that, haven't we? Have we yes. voted on that? Yes. Yeah, okay. And, and just a message to the community that classes do run Monday through Thursday from 6 to 8.50 p.m., running from early October through May. Nice. All right. And item number 14 is the review of subcommittee recording protocols. This is a matter I just wanted to bring up very quickly um, as we start our year long of meetings. So we do live stream regular school committee meetings um, and any budget related meetings via YouTube and Facebook Live, uh, which is a sound practice that I think we should continue. Um, live streaming subcommittee meetings is something uh, that I did want to discuss or at least get um, input from this committee um, as it does require extra resources and personnel, um, often on short notice too uh, for our very fantastic but small crew here at EHS TV. Uh, so the cost benefit um, is something that we are sometimes, you know, debating back and forth. Uh, perhaps a solution is to make it our practice to do what we did last week when the ad hoc superintendent subcommittee convened and that meeting was open to the public in this room at EHS, uh, which is ADA compliant. We recorded the mu meeting, which required only one camera and one person to oversee. We posted the recording the following day on Friday, August 26th, um, and this struck me as sort of a reasonable way uh, to meet our commitment to transparency while also managing our resources. If we do follow this practice, our residents can count on two things. One, all subcommittee meetings will be held in an accessible location, and the two, the recordings will be posted the following day. 
And lastly, I don't think that establishing this ground rule should preclude any of the subcommittee chairpersons from requesting a live stream for any particular meeting that you deem it appropriate to do so. Again, this is a recommendation only, um, and this body makes the final determination. I'd like to accept the uh, recommendation and uh, favorable action. I'll second the motion of May Di Maria. Mr. McLaughlin? Okay, all right then. Um, all those, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Did you want to say something, Ms. Lambert? On the motion, I just, are, are we updating our rules? Is this just general practice? I just want to know like where we're kind of housing this. I, I, I think we could, you know, this is obviously, we could call this like a resolution and that we've, we've all kind of agreed that this is the, uh, the best, uh, yep. Practice. Avenue with the exception. I support it. I just, I, you know, if maybe we could update the website just, you know, under like regular meetings and then subcommittee meetings just for expectations. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Um, and to be sure that we uh, update the website to uh, uh, let folks know that this is what we do when we have a subcommittee meeting. And, and again, obviously, we, we have the option to go live stream if, uh, if, if, if an agenda item comes up that, you know, is certainly going to garner a, a tremendous attention. Um, and it's, it, is, it really is, to do this like this is, uh, it's transparent, but it's also, it streamlines our uh, operation a bit. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. You have so moved. Madam Superintendent. Thank you. So Roman numeral seven is item submitted by school committee members. Item number one is to explore the feasibility of implementing a cell phone policy at Everett High School. And this was submitted by um, Mr. McLaughlin and Mr. Mangan. And I'm happy to say a few words unless you would like to, yeah. Um, so uh, there is a cell phone policy, um, obviously, in our school district. However, it has been brought up not just by members of this committee, but by families and also even by our own principals and our cell well director about potentially um, tightening up that policy a little bit like we've seen other districts do. Uh, there's many reasons for this, and I'm happy to also bring our cell well director at some point to talk a little bit about this. It is something we want to explore. We do have principals who are going to be working on this with their school communities. Uh, basically, it, it really actually is more less about you know the, the distraction to the school day, which it absolutely is, but more to just about the social emotional wellness of our students and the level of anxiety that we know comes and the social pressure that comes with the constant um, social media presence. And so to be able, we've been looking at a lot of the research on kind of sort of like diminishing some of these um, unfortunate effects and impacts to our students moving forward. It is something that other districts have done. So I do thank the committee for bringing this forward. I think it is something worth exploring. Um, so thank you so much for doing so. Um, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, I uh, fully echo the comments of Madam Superintendent Taliani and uh, Mr. Mangan and I had an opportunity to speak with her over the course of the summer about uh, an initiative of this sort. And uh, I look forward to uh, exploring the uh, possibilities and the alternatives, measures that are out there to help our students uh, in the coming school year with this matter. Um, I believe the appropriate place would to be referred to rules, policies, and procedures, and we could look at creating some language with Ms. Dr. Wallace and some other folks to uh, discuss uh, implementation of some sort of a program. Is, is that reasonable, Madam Superintendent? Yep. Uh, so I would make a motion that we refer this to rules, policies, and procedures. Second motion. And that I would ask for a meeting to be set up within a reasonable amount of time. On Thank the you. motion, Mr. Um, Ms. Lambert. At the end of the June school committee, uh, I believe we had discussed creating the ad hoc committee to work with MASIC on the policy subscription service, which would be, I think, you know, while rules, policy, and procedure, I think as a subcommittee is great, the working with MASIC would allow us to bring in teachers, administrators, families, students, and to build out these policies. So I was just gonna recommend that perhaps um, we could put that on the next item and begin to build out the process. I know our field rep from MASIC is at the ready to get us started with the process. Um, and there are some 
some um, best practices. Sorry, <laughs> it's getting so, late. <laughs> so, so we would have we would invite uh, the folks from Massac to come to the rules, policies, and procedures it, to it, discuss. No, it would actually be a separate. So the item that was approved the last time mm -hmm. was to create a, a committee to work with MASIC, which would then, so what would happen at that point is once that committee is formed, build out the process for, a, and if we could maybe lay this on the table, or I mean not this particular one, but the, um, subscription service and working with MASIC where we do have a meeting and I can follow up. But that would be my recommendation since I do feel, you know, from the high school perspective, it's gonna be a little bit different than a K through eight. So having the different buildings and um, even having families and students, you know, like we have Riley, have their kind of voice. I know the phone becomes a safety issue. You know, so like we're talking about safety and that's uh, parents, that's how most of our parents have found out about some of the concerns. So, you know, we, we just want to make sure everybody's voice is represented. And in the subcommittee, sometimes it's not. But if we have this group with MASIC, it might be an opportunity. And sorry, I'm rambling. It's late. So basically, we're going to send this to the Rules, Policies, and Procedures Committee, this item in particular. But we'd also uh, be because Massac is not on the calendar tonight. Um, do you want to? So, so we, yeah, so we'll just, we'll, we'll discuss that at our next meeting. All those in favor of sending this to the Rules of Policies and Procedures Aye. Committee? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. You have so moved. Thank you. Thank you. And just before going on, just to reiterate, we do have cell phone policies. And as the school year starts, I don't want it to seem like we don't and that teachers and principals won't be putting out expectations in the school, in the classroom, because that absolutely does exist. However, I do think that this is an appropriate time for us to think about a best practices and a district-wide policy. Right. Uh, so item number two is the matter of an alleged open meeting law violation on August 11th, 2022, is filed by Mr. Stephen Fitzgerald, and this was submitted by Chairwoman Cristiano. So I, I just wanted to let you all know that I'll be uh, working with uh, the senior leadership team of uh, Superintendent Talihani uh, to address this matter. So I would ask you to just... Make a motion for you to work with the superintendent in her legal department to answer any questions on the open meeting law violation. Thank Second. you so much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, the ayes have it. We are so moved. Madam Superintendent. Thank you. On to Roman numeral eight, which are the subcommittee reports. Item number one is the finance and negotiations subcommittee meeting from June 22nd, 2022. Madam Chair, I submit um, and ask that we place on file the subcommittee report for finance and negotiations, June 22nd, 2022. Second. Motion is made and seconded to uh, accept the finance and negotiations report from June 22nd, 2022. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. You're so moved. Thank you. Item number two is the ad hoc superintendent subcommittee report from August 25th, 2022. Madam um, Chair, I submit and ask that it be placed on file the ad hoc superintendent committee minutes from August 25th, 2022. Second. Motion is made and seconded to uh, accept the minutes from our most recent meeting of the 25th. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. You're so moved. Thank you. And Roman numeral nine, bills and payroll. Madam Chairwoman. Uh, um, would respectfully ask that I recuse myself as I tried to previously on this matter in the mere appearance of a conflict of interest. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Mr. Mangan. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move to um, submit bills and payroll in the amount of $1,345,195.58. Second. Motion is made and seconded to submit bills and payrolls in the amount of $1,000,000. $345,195.58. Uh, clerk will call the roll. Mr. Barrows? Yes. Mayor D. Maria? Yes. Ms. Lambert? Yes. Mr. LaMonica? Yes. Mr. Mangan? Yes. Mr. Marcus? Yes. Ms. Sarney? 
Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Have eight in the affirmative. We have, you have so moved. Madam Chair, uh, a move to pay bills and payroll in the amount of one million three hundred and forty-five thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars and fifty-eight cents. Motion is made and seconded to pay bills in the amount of one million three hundred and forty-five thousand one hundred ninety-five dollars and fifty-eight cents. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Barrows. Yes. Mayor De Maria. Yes. Ms. Lambert. Yes. Mr. Lamonica. Yes. Mr. Mangan. Yes. Mr. Marcus. Yes. Ms. Sarney. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Eight members in the affirmative. You have so moved. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion has been made and second for adjournment. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Barrows. Yes. Mayor De Maria. Yes. Ms. Lambert. Yes. Mr. LaMonica. Yes. Mr. Mangan. Yes. Mr. Marcus. No. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Ms. Sarney. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Eight to one. One negative. I'm moving in this room. <laughs> I've heard you do that before. Uh, so uh, we'll be meeting next Wait, Tuesday second. night. No, but, Actually, are you having a building? That's the only thing we have to do. That's the only thing we have to do. That's the only thing we have to do. We'll be meeting next Wednesday, uh, September 7th, due to the primary being on the 6th. I uh, just want to let the uh, public at home know, as well as the school committee members, you know, that we're just uh, eight days away and we'll be back at it. All right? Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. That was quick. I'll see you.